Welcome, aloha, e como mai, everyone, to our Cafecito Cultural. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Culture and Diversity Conversational Panel of this Professional Learning Community Group. I'm Rosa Bell, founder of this wonderful group of professionals that work together to bring culture and value diversity to our classes. Today, we are pleased to share this Cafecito Cultural with Dr. Alohilani Okamura and Kumu Rebecca Kahialani Sambor. Kumu, mahalo for accepting to come and share with us about your culture and your support for all educators to enhance their knowledge about Hawaiian culture. Kumu, Rebecca, you have been teaching Hawaiian language at Waipahu High School for the past 35 years, and you have also held several leadership positions between the DOE during her, your tenure at Waipahu. Hi, aloha me kako e rosa. Nice to be here. Um, Yes, I have, and I've enjoyed every single year that I've been at Waipahu High School. Mahalo for having us. Thank you. Dr. Alohinani Okamura, you are the World Language Specialist at the UH Manoa College of Education, Institute for Teaching Education, Secondary Division. Formerly, Alohilani have served in the Hawaii DOE and Hawaiian Focused Charter School teaching Olelo Hawaii for 25 years. Aloha, welcome. Aloha, Rosa. Mahalo for inviting us today. You're welcome. Today, we are pleased to present a brief introduction to the culture, history, and language of Hawaii. I, I would like to start with the word aloha. Everybody always hear aloha, aloha. But in Hawaii, aloha means more than hello. It expresses wishes for a positive and respectful life. Dr. Alohilani, what else we can use with aloha? How does work uh, the language in Hawaiian? when you say aloha, what is it? Um, so when I first think of aloha, I think of the olalo no iau or the proverb, aloha ke kahi ke kahi, which is um, for us to love each other. And we can also use the word aloha as in aloha aina, um, the love of the land, and um, aloha ke akua, love for God. Um, but we can also use it as um, greetings, aloha kakahiaka in the morning, aloha avakea in the mid midday, Aloha ahi ahi in the afternoon and aloha uminala. Oh, aloha amoy at night. Mahalo. Oh, okay. So to say good afternoon right now, it would be aloha uinala. Did I, oh. did I hear fast this or did I make a mistake in that? Um, I think it's aloha avakea, but wherever you are in the world, in Hawaii, we're avakea. Oh. Yeah. All right. Take notes, people. Please take notes. Okay. <laughs> So let's start with this question. How can I build the culture of aloha in my classroom? How, how I would do this? Uh, Kumu, please, if you can help us. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna um, go back on top that word aloha. Such a small word, but like huge impact, yeah? So we always tell the kids, it always starts and ends with aloha, yeah? People know that aloha means hello and also means goodbye, and they seem to be confused by that, but it truly does start, start and end. Um, with aloha. And so how you build a, a culture of aloha in your classroom is that you keep that in mind. Um, that's how, so when you greet the kids, aloha mai kako, aloha kakahiaka, aloha avakea. And then um, we don't really say aloha when we leave, but the intent is aloha. We usually say ahui ho, malama pono, see you later, um, take care of yourself. So how you build a culture of aloha is Really, you just mirrored that aloha. Okay, wonderful. Anything else you would like to um, add, Dr. Okamura? Yeah, so I was also going to um, piggyback on what uh, Kumu Sambor talked about. You know, um, really building a culture of aloha is really grounding students in, um, we call it the loina and la vena of Hawaii, which are really um, cultural values and cultural behaviors. And um, because our language has been um, like from 1896, it was actually outlawed. It was actually banned in the schools. And it wasn't till 1986 where um, Hawaiian immersion schools were um, lawfully able to run. Um, we've had quite a struggle to preserve the language um, over the years, as well as um, 
cultural values and customs. So it's very, very important, you know, um, in our classes that it's not just uh, teaching of the language, but it's also um, um, reclaiming cultural practices as well and um, really engaging um, with students of what that looks like in a contemporary setting. And I, I really want to um, let um, want to thank you for inviting us in Pepe Luali February because not only is it Black History Month, but it is um, uh, Mahina Olelo Hawaii Hawaiian Language Month as well as Kumu Alohilani was talking about or Kauka Alohilani was talking about um, uh, just you know the just being advocates for the um, Olelo um, in we it is um, legal that. Um, the Olelo Hawaii is one of two official languages in the state of Hawaii now besides um, English, Olelo Hawaii is. And so we celebrate every day, but we um, really focus on the language um, Ikea Mahina o Pepe Luali this month in February. And aloha mai kakoa pau. Nice to see everybody here. Yeah, a lot of people show up in Wapahu High School say present. Welcome, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> We got Maida as well. So we are in family here. Both good. And also nicely, we can have this both um, cultures in one month and start celebrating um, both sides, right? And then today we're gonna learn so much about Hawaiian culture, language, and history. Now I have another question. If uh, How can we build in this relationship of Hawaiian culture to then incorporate the culture in our classes? How can we work that? So, uh, Kuma Sambori, can you go back to the, the previous slide? And no. I'd just like to take take note of on the top left hand where it says, A'o aku, a'o mai. Um, so, a'o is to teach. Um, so, a'o aku is to teach and a'o mai is to learn. And that aku and the mai are directionals. Um, and I think it's really important um, to build this culture of aloha in the classroom. And then the next slide, come somewhere. Um, um, integrating a sense of Hawaii in our place. It is um, always being observant and aware that um, in our teaching is our learning and in the learning is the teaching. So we learn from our students, our haumana, as much as they learn from us. Yeah. Um, and then this uh, on the top left hand, you see it says a pupa akai kaku, um, let's share a meal. So it is a sharing of a physical meal, but it's also sharing of um, this thing that is sustaining for us, which is the language, right? So how do we come together? And it's not like the teacher coming and teach, you know, it's really everybody together, learning together. And in this, um, Anyway, so this is a way that we can integrate um, that sense of Hawaii, right, in the classes. And yeah, mahalo, Koka. And you know, and then this visual that you have on the screen right now is um, what everybody would, you know, consider like a very typical Hawaiian meal, but it really did come together with all of the different groups coming together to share to pupa kaikako yeah. So we have things that are truly. Um, indigenous like Pua Akalua, Hawaii, um, Kalua Pig, um, and then you have Lau Lau and Poi, and also Haupia, those are, you know, staples of a, um, a Hawaiian meal. But then you have this introduced thing with chicken long rice that has become a staple in um, the meal as well as lomi salmon. Just like how we are integrating and learning from each other, it just, not only how do you integrate Hawaii into your classes, but how do you really acknowledge all of the ethnicities that are in your classes to come to this one place to um, to bring their bring their meal to the table. What do they have to offer? Yeah, like um, Alohilani was saying like, aku aomai, and that is in both positions, teacher and student, we learn from each other. And then also the question, how would you like to integrate Hawaii in your classes? You've come here, I'm kind of thinking that, oh, I, I don't know why you came here. Maybe you wanted to just niele what's going on today on the Hawaiian culture, but nice to see everybody here. But you know, what is it that you want to bring or how do you want to bring Hawaii into your classrooms, whether you're in Hawaii or not? 
Perfect, yes. And it's, um, it's, it's very good also for students that are not here in Hawaii because we got other members um, in our cafecito today that there is always a time and a space for them to learn something new. And why not to bring over the culture of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the culture of Aloha into our classes. And um, I have uh, one more question for you. So when we talk about the social justice um, subject, how do you approach this in when you teach in Hawaiian culture? So, um, so we we really look at the social justice standards, right, from the so Southern Poverty Law Center, and uh, what's called teaching for tolerance social justice standards, and um, in the four domains of identity, diversity, justice, and action. Um, because we're um, teaching Hawaiian class. Um, it's really how do we create or help our students to look from a lens that is first centered in a Hawaiian thought base, right? And um, so we have to cultivate that. And then we're also cultivating, so it's helping them to, first of all, understand as young people, their own identity, and then I, their own identity in context of this, some oftentimes it's a very new way of looking at the world through a Hawaiian worldview. And then it's also, we also have the other lens of the local culture, which um, Kum Samborn had talked about. So we're teaching multiple, I always tell the students like we're going to the eye doctor because it's like these, <laughs> all these different lenses that come together and, and creating this identity, it's understanding the diversity amongst um, our entire classroom um, and really putting that into um, action. Right, so this idea of justice as um, reclamation and revitalization, you know, it's really how do we bring um, Olala Hawaii to the 21st century and understanding um, the history and the things that root us uh, as a people, but to have it be not a stagnant language, but a living and a thriving language. Kum Samboy. Oh, kitoka. <laughs> I know, um, so this is what happened the last week. Kevin um, Profe um, is one of the co-teachers. I, besides Hawaiian language, we teach um, Natural Resource Core, and um, we're doing the science of um, ecosystems. And then there are just some terms, some scientific terms that we went over, um, biotic and abiotic, and what is that. And um, we were looking through the slides, and um, the students said, okay, so abiotics are living things. and the abiotic are um, things that are not living, like rocks, air, wind, and then um, biotic are all living cell things. And then after I looked at it on the screen, I said, well, not all cultures believe that, you know. So I just want you to put the Hawaiian cultural lens on there too, because um, Hawaiians really do think that um, pohaku, rocks, wind, rain, and all those things are living. So. Um, just make sure that you understand that when we do go out into the field and we're going to be meeting people who have um, who are going to be instructing us in the lo'i, um, being in the tarot field, they're going to come with this approach of these are living things, you know. So scientifically, we call them abi abiotic and biotic, but, you know, culturally, the Hawaiian lens says that thing is a living entity, the wind that we have, they all have names, you know? So I said, you know, if you don't understand the Hawaiian cultural lens, think of Pocahontas and, you know, the colors of the wind and things like that. And so they're like, oh yeah, got it, got it. But oye hoi, oye no. One, yeah. one little thing I would like to uh, make a comment in here. Uh, when I just got here, I used to, um, love to see the the rocks that they have like outside of buildings or houses and and i was like oh what a nice decoration because it's not just a rock that look like common it's it's very different they have like little holes or it's different very different than whatever i saw before and um i was in right outside of the hospital in queens over here in Neville beach and it was one. And then I asked one of my coworkers back in that time, I, where I can purchase these type of rocks like this. I, I would like to have them in front, in the front of my house because they look beautiful. And then he explained me that this is not just simple rocks. This represents uh, 
people that we, uh, our ancestors, that's what, that's what he told me. I didn't know anything because I just got here and I was just happy to be there and, and fall in love with that. He said, don't you ever touch that. Don't you ever try to take one and take it home. That's not like that. Can you um, help me to explain this more about this? Um, it's not decoration. It's a living, uh, um, how I can say, it's something that you guys believe is part of your culture. Yeah, so... Mahalo for just, um, you know, just approaching it with respect. Um, people do have strong beliefs in um, those physical things that, you know, may be considered abiotic and um, scientifically, but yeah. So the rocks, the, the pohaku, um, the wind, they, they had functional purposes. And so um, when you go to, you see a particular pohaku, um, sometimes they were, so for example, there's a place um, near Wahiwa called um, Kukani Loko. And uh, there are different stones that we've gone before and um, it looks very inviting. Um, people, I've seen children um, play on it like a jungle gym. And it's very interesting how, you know, one man's jungle gym is another um, culture's, um, birthing stones so you know it's just how do you approach things culturally well when you go to places you just kind of take a look at what's going on um get your clues from other people if you don't see other people there just you know educate yourself before you go there knowing that if you're going to go to a particular place um, that has these kinds of things that you are going to keep it there and you're going to just um, approach it with respect i don't know if that answers your question rosa but that's kind yeah. of what kind of came yeah, to it answer my question because um i i mean good thing that i was in that place with the right person to explain me like you just did um why not to do that it was not something for decoration they look beautiful but it was not for decoration it was specifically because it's part of the hawaiian culture and yes thank you so much also um since we're talking um, about Hawaiian culture more and more and more deep into it. I would like to highlight, and if you can please help us, if one of you can please help us to highlight to people who are unfamiliar with Hawaiian culture. What do you want to do? Start from the very beginning? What, what, what part? That, me... That's the next slide. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well, wait, before we go on. Okay. Um, right. So um, just adding on to the Pohaku stories. Um, so on the big island, there's a waterfall called Akaka Falls. And um, how some rocks actually um, are tied deeply with um, Mo'olalo from the past. So the story of a little boy with his dog, right? Who um, would get teased by these girls and he would go home to his grandma and um, he was crying. Is this the one with the malo kumu? that his malo, right, the grandma would um, dry his malo over the fire and that the girls were teasing him that, oh, it, it smelled kind of stinky. And, and so he was super sad. And so one day he went to the top of the, um, the waterfall and he jumped off. And when he jumped down, he became a rock. And then his dog saw what he did and his dog jumped after him and became this little, little rock. Oh, yeah, a smaller rock right by side of him. So mm -hmm. today when we go, when we go, we see those two pohaku and we know the mo'olelo and the story and realize where it comes from. Um, but with the untrained eye, right? They just, oh, what pretty rocks that are here, you know? And so I think that idea of respect, um, you know, wh wherever we are in the world, it, that's when we go to places, right? It's really to acknowledge and um, whatever is the indigenous or the native culture and really and try to understand the stories and then with utmost respect yeah mahalo and there's always a story i mean you see something there's a mo'olelo for that you know so <laughs> I, I think really your curiosity should be um i wonder what the story is behind that you know right. behind that um, physical feature behind 
you know, that flower, there's every, everything has a mo'olelo, a story. And whenever I visit other places, I always think about the indigenous um, cultures there. And I always wonder, gee, I wonder what the story is behind that. And then if I am kind of nearly a little bit um, inquisitive, then I'll go and find the story out. And so I think that maybe um, people's curiosity on what, wherever, you know, whatever point they want um, to know about the particular Hawaiian cultural thing, um, it should start there. So your curiosity should generate like what path you're going to go on because really there's so many places to start, but your curiosity should really start your journey. Correct. And as a teacher, imagine if we will have this curiosity, imagine the students, uh, um, students that are not from here. And from the first time they come into Hawaii, it will be for military movement or anything, or for them to learn so much about the beauty of Hawaiian culture. There's so many stories that we have in here and how we incorporating this in our classes, not because, um, oh, well, I cannot do this because I don't, I'm not teaching Hawaiian language, but you are in Hawaii and to incorporate the Hawaiian culture in any language you're teaching is added more to the beauty of culture itself. And that's why um, we do Cafecito Culturales in which you have this conversation. So not us here in Hawaii, but the entire world can see Hawaiian culture and bring it over to their classes as well. Well, thank you so much. I can be no more, uh, more curiosity on me now. They go and explore a little bit more out there because I know I'm, I'm here, but I, it has been places that I don't have any idea. So I need to continue my exploration through Hawaiian and Hawaiian culture. Go okay, for it, Rosa. Yeah. Can I just add one more thing to the idea of social justice, Rosa, is yes. um, really, it would be so beautiful if all language teachers um, really um, addressed like uh, historical events, right? In their, like how Kevin does. Um, but also I had, so my new job, right? I'm at the university and I work with student teachers and um, I had a um, Hawaiian language teacher candidate last semester who at the beginning, all she said is like, I wish I could see more Hawaiian on my campus. And I'm like, okay, so what can we do? And so I helped her to really think about her lessons and her units and, you know, how can she get the students engaged to be able to even talk about things like um, Laku Okoa, Hawaii Independence Day, right? And so she did and she had them and they had Hawaiian flags like all over the place. And she had this giant Hawaiian flag in the cafeteria mm -hmm. and students were like, not taking Hawaiian were like asking her students, oh, what's this about? And they were able to go through the history and uh, be able to explain it to them. And then it became, um, it kind of caught on because then other faculty members were coming up to her students, not just to her, asking like, oh, I see this thing, like, what is this going on? Mm -hmm. You know, and, um, and I think it's very important for us to, um, not just to be supportive, but to also, center our teaching in things that are here right it's not oh i'm going to teach this language and it's like that language of that lands over there it's about how do i teach the language to engage with things that are actually going on here in these lands as well so mahalo mahalo kikuma and can i just jump in one more thing with that it kind of made me think about this year um it, it happened to be that um the uh Dr. Martin Luther King um, celebration on the Monday that we didn't have school. It was the same day that we um, had the Ho'okahuli um, Aupuni Mo'i, the overthrow of the Hawaii monarchy. And so, you know, so we did learn about um, Reverend um, Martin Luther King and we did listen to his um, speech on um, the blueprint for your life. And that was kind of like a jumping point and the students were very much in, um, very interested in what his words were. And so we did focus on that, but then I, I would do a disservice to the Hawaiian culture, um, the Hawaiian language class, if I didn't um, share with them that on this very day also, this is what happened. And so because we're, um, it's a language class, you know, how do you do whatever cultural thing you do 
in the language yeah so in the target language so we did both in the target language and very doable but um they were interested in in both things and um the laku okoa it was really um interesting this year Kumo, that one of the students said oh Kumo, yeah we heard about laku okoa before i said you have where did you hear from laku okoa he goes she, he said oh and he named one of the teachers at our school oh he's teaching that he taught laku okoa to us i thought i don't think i've ever heard uh a social studies teacher um, teach laku okoa. So it's getting out there. So um, the more that we share that, other people will find importance in it and then um, word will be out. Yes, mahalo. Um, I was thinking also when I was um, working on my license here, um, our professor took us, our Hawaiian studies professor took us to King Kamehameha vacation home. I forgot the name of the place, but it was a whole journal to get there, to pass through, to ask for permissions. Um, they did a, a, I would call a shant and grant us permission to pass through those portals, portals and then go and see. And then there were also uh, plans. And then we learned about the different plans the Hawaiians used to use for like medication, like if you cut when the when the um, when the people who was the athletics uh, cut themselves or so, there was a plan that it, it looks like a bandaid so you can make it until they get home and sanitize and all that. It was so interesting and so full in 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 um, how I can say like the knowledge that we were absorbing in there that I still use it in my classes when when I have different units of studies and then I mention, you know, here in Hawaii, this is what we use, but then in these other countries as well. So they, they just absorbing both from both sides, from being here in Hawaii and also from the language that they are learning. I think it's super beautiful and it's something that you can incorporate in your classes, having it right here at hand. But if you are not here, well, the internet would help you as well to get some other um, information and knowledge about it, but why not to incorporate not just the culture of the language or the target language, but also the ones that we are learning or that we are would like to welcome in our classes. And in this case today, that we're talking about Hawaiian culture. I think um, uh, our also mentor adding on Rosa, one more thing. Yes. So, um, uh, which could be easy or not so easy is um, to reclaim the place names. So instead of using um, the place names that were given, mm -hmm. um, use the traditional place names of the area, okay. right? So instead of saying Hawaii Kai, which is actually after Henry Kaiser, mm -hmm. that's not the Kai of the ocean, right? It's Mauna Lua or um, Pro City is not Pro City. Okay. Yeah, it's actually um, Pu'uloa or it's also Manana. Yeah, yeah. it's the area for Pro City. So. Oh. Okay. Yeah. When you change the name, you really change the mana of that whole place. And yes. the, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, and, and I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, and, and we know that when they changed the names, it was uh, explicitly to take the mana away. Right. So it is our, all of our responsibility and kuleana to be able to put the mana back. Exactly. Oh, correct. And I'm going to start doing it because. Um, is it will be good and then then they start repeating and and they start learning from there and then things eventually will be changing and calling out the right name but i have i'm i'm reading here um kevin say that he used the indigenous names use the indigenous names of places put the mana back thank you kevin put the mana back mm -hmm. and it was interesting too you're asking about you know um so a little um cultural history that when the um when there was the Christian conversion, um, that the missionaries actually used the heiau, the stones that were for the Hawaiians, um, the heiau, and they converted that into and built their halipule, their churches with those, um, with those. And then also what they did um, is they we didn't have any kind of concrete or cement. So what they had the women do is to cut their hair and Put it and mix it with the coral so that it would be the mortar for the stones and you know that that's kind of like two things that um are pretty disrespectful one which is taking you know your hair 
which had mana in it for young women, especially, and then putting it into this place during that conversion. So all of these little subtle and sometimes blatantly, um, blatant ways that people would um, convert, not just the, um, even just the crushing of the spirit, and then also just the taking of that, that power of the, the um, place names. Um, uh, I think that's pretty interesting. Yep, that's correct. Um, I have Myra. Um, Myra, do you want to talk? Your message was very lo uh, long. If you want me to read that or you would like to say it. Myra, I would love to hear your voice, Myra. Yeah, I want to hear you. I want I was just sharing, hi, I was just sharing something that, um, yeah, it was a long test. Uh, I think what I get from what uh, Kumo basically keep respect, right? Respect the cultures that we don't know, respect if we are unfamiliar, uh, even if we don't know anything, just treat everything with respect. And as teachers and educators, we need to educate others and teach them because sometimes all the misunderstandings, especially in these times, is because the lack of knowledge. Sometimes it's not because people is doing it on purpose, but because they just don't know. And if we don't educate them and teach them, we are gonna continue with these kind of misunderstandings. And what you just shared, Kumo, about the, the stones being used to, to build the new city, same thing happened in, in Mexico with the archeological sites. So it's very interesting. Not the hair part, I never heard that, but. The indigenous, what they did is they used to hide some of their idols and some of the crosses, and they start worshiping the crosses. So the priests, they thought, okay, they are worshiping the cross, but they were, and they were just keep worshiping their own idols because they were hidden into the into the crosses. Yeah, yeah it really is interesting how that crossover um, happens, and and yeah, it it happened throughout all of the colonization. I think that's a really good segue into this next one then. Yes, that's what I'm about to say that how are we gonna, um, what we like uh, highlight to people that are unfamiliar with the culture then? I think like what um, we had said earlier is just approach everything. Like what, whenever, you know, something that's in, unfamiliar with me, I'm gonna really um, approach it first with curiosity and then just investigate and investigate with, um, respect and then also go to a source that you know the internet is such a beautiful place but it's not always a place that we can you know rely on for especially um like what is a true cultural resource you know so some people think that that delicious pineapple is indigenous to hawaii it is not indigenous to hawaii but our climate um you know did allow us to grow it um, and then also, you know, just different Tahitian dancers, they're from Tahiti, hence the word Tahitian dance. But there's all different kinds of things that, you know, people have just taken for granted that those things are um, culturally Hawaiian only because they see it so many times. And the more and more you see things and people don't necessarily correct it, then people are going to assume, oh, that must be it. Yeah, so just... Um, just make sure that you're um, check your your sources. And I'm going yes, to well. share, I'm sharing the sources with our members right now. Okay. Yeah, and I was also going to add on. Um, don't be afraid. You know, to to try, to just do because I think if you do it with um, humility and with respect, yeah. you know, people see your intention. Um, it's the people who. Um, don't come with respect and humility. Sometimes there's issues, but um, if you make a mistake, um, you know, we have cool soundboard. So, you know, she'll tell us. <laughs> and then funny you should say that, um, Kaoka, because see that our <laughs> um, it really means, means just go forward. And that's the um, words that um, Kamehameha um, said when he went into battle. It's like, let's just go for it. And um, we're gonna go for it until we drink the bitter waters of victory. And as a, in, you know, as a teacher, as an educator, um, that really is what we're doing. It's like, we're trying to move forward um, while reflecting backward, you know, how can we move forward? And then also bring with us all these things that, you know, people have kind of 
lay by the wayside. They're, they are important. Um, students are so curious, but they don't know what, you know, they, they don't know what there is in our um, storehouse of um, Hawaiian culture unless we bring them to them like this. My background is Aloi. Before, when I first started in the classroom, nobody wanted to go to the Aloi because it's dirty and muddy and icky and there'd be screams. Now, the first thing that I say, okay, um, where would you guys like to go? First thing that everybody says is, we want to go to Aloi. I thought my things have changed <laughs> and but but I think it's because they know what it represents you know because lo'i has taro taro is ha'aloa so there are mo'olelo connected to these places it's just not dirt it's soil with you know ha'aloa growing in it so they they're making these tiny little connections and uh, Maida put in the chat, um, don't be, don't be makamaka or hi makamaka, right? Like, don't think that you're above um, being humble and learning. And Maida, when you turn on your camera, I started to tear because I think I miss you so much and um, miss your insight and what you bring to, um, to language here in Hawaii. Oh, so. mahalo, mahalo. <sighs> but trust me. No, oh, thank you. But trust me, I, I, I did a lot, a lot of very unculturally polite things before school because <laughs> I didn't know. She, she told me a lot of stuff that I didn't know. So yeah, miss you guys too. But it's that you didn't know, Maida, but you know, you're so curious is that you always want to know, you know, and then you, but why Kumu? How come? Why? Claudia, you had a question? Yes, as I'm listening to all of you and just taking all of this in, um, you have to know that at this moment in time, we had a terrible storm here in New Hampshire and we're literally encrusted in ice. So I came to this wanting to absorb your warmth and, and wanting to be in your space with you and to hear the languages of Hawaii. And um, I wondered if you knew about um how to do virtual tours um and the reason i ask is during the pandemic one of the ways that during the shutdowns that uh some writers that that um are part of a group here in new hampshire um they did virtual writing tours in different places and i thought remembering that how wonderful would it be for someone in hawaii if I send you some information uh, and, and um, there's a thing called story map that you can use to actually put, uh, put us in different places around Hawaii. If you could invite people, students to do writing tours about different places, um, much in the way that you've, you've explained about how to, and you know, people should come in and, and, and refer to the places with their appropriate names, how uh, people should be aware of, of, of the history. Um, it's, it's something for a, another discussion, but um, I just wanted to put out there, if any of you is interested in ever doing that, please let me know, because it would be something worth doing even Rosa with like a Spanish honor society. Um, you know, just, just to, we, we, I, I want, I wish I could take what I'm learning here and bring it into other places, particularly this month, because it's so important. So Claudia, just thank you so much. So Claudia, um, what we're doing now that we're gonna incorporate this, I'm just gonna give you a little uh, uh, clip on it because it's a surprise that it's coming, but you'll see with the invitation that I send you with the Multicultural Festival, we're going international, international now because we want to um, bring the culture of Aloha to the festival so that the world know it. But what you have in there is very interesting as well. And I know that probably um, Kumu uh, would like to adopt uh, the idea as well, but um, we can integrate it on the festival. We can integrate it in, 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 in as the map, I think you say, uh, the program that you have, or we can work out something. Um, I, you know, you just put my mind to spin. I have an idea now, but uh, yeah, it, it is a wonderful idea. 
And then because we're using so much um, resources, uh, so much technology now, um, yeah. You, leave me, you give me, you let me speech less because now my brain is working. You know how it goes fast and like, whoa, wait, yeah, that's a good idea. But uh, we are trying, the students are trying to um, integrate this into this year's festival. The first time it was, of course, it was a lot of the culture of Aloha, but now that they go virtually and it's being um, adopting the idea they go international, that could be something that we can incorporate as well. Thank you so much. You gave me Mahalo, well, Claudia, for your um, your question. And yeah, we're going to share our um, email address just a few slides from now, and then a couple of resources. But yes, in the pandemic, there were many sites on um, Oahu and Hawaii who did offer virtual tours for our students as well. And so we can dialogue um, after. Mahalo. Um, Prof. Hini now. Hi, right, mahalo. Um, I was trying to type it in the chat because my question is kind of like two and three part. Um, but I was going to ask, um, what is the role, maybe you can talk a little bit about this, of protocol in Hawaiian culture? And um, how does implementing protocol in our classes, whether we teach Hawaiian language or Spanish or Japanese or whatever, how does that reflect um, a culture of aloha in your classroom? How does that help us to build a culture of aloha in our classrooms? And what, what does protocol look like in your mind? And could you just say a little bit about that? I, I can start um, just uh, protocol. They can, the, I teach Hawaiian. And so um, I, we, I have always, from, I wanna say the second year I started teaching many years ago, um, started with a class Oli. And understanding that the Oli is just a form of, a, of like, a, it's, a, it's an Oli that will, that asks permission to gain entrance into the classroom. But it's much more than that. It's asking permission of whomever is going to be um, teaching you to, um, teach you with you know an open heart and open mind because what you're saying is you're saying hey i'm outside and physically the students were outside when the the chance is we're outside it's rainy it's cold please let us enter this classroom and so um it is kind of symbolic like i don't know what you know i don't know what you know so please um, it's dark here enlighten us with the language and then also it's starting it's in um, Hawaiian, so they have to oli makolal Hawaii, and it gets them into the mindset that, okay, I'm leaving this English speaking place outside. I'm wa walking into this new place um, of knowledge of the, the language, and I'm starting off with the language. So you start with the language. And then it also um, gets them into the mindset of, I'm asking permission. Now, it, that's a, um, that's kind of very, it's like, you know, Kuma Alohe was saying earlier, like putting, you, putting yourself in um, a humble place, a respectful place, like you're, you're, humbling ask, you're humbly asking to, to learn. And then there's a response from the teacher and the teacher is saying, yep, come on in. You know, I don't have much to offer you, but here it is. You know, I'm not gonna, um, the, the ending of the, the chant that the student says, mai pa'ai kaleo he ole kahea mai e. It says, please don't silence your voice. Don't, don't shut your voice out. To me, um, please let your your leo um, flow to us. Yeah, so we start with that, and then for the other um, this year I haven't done so, but um, for the second, third, and fourth year students, we also leave with a chant too. Yeah, so we start with a chant and we leave with a chant, and very different. And the the, um, the departure chant says, "Thank you." Uh, you know, there is acknowledging gratitude for what they've done for the day. Thank you for teaching me. Um, you stay, I'm going to leave with aloha, and I'm going to go forward, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take this knowledge outside a classroom. So that's how the protocol of the oli is used in um, the classroom. And then also, whenever you go out and you visit other people, you're going to ask permission to gain entrance to wherever they're going. But I, I, the, the thing with protocol, too, 
is that you don't ever want to put the host in an uncomfortable position. So, you know, if you're going to go somewhere, I usually will ask the, um, the host, um, would you, is it okay to, to Oli? Um, would you, are you going to be responding? Would you rather us not Oli? And so um, we'll take our cues from the host. Yeah. And then also, you know, when I, I tell the students too, I'm talking like, you don't have to go and do, you know, hello, okay. you don't have to go a long chant. You don't ever go into somebody's home and just open their door. You will always acknowledge your presence from outside. Um, you know, the chant now is a knock on the door or some, you know, in Hawaiian, we just go, Hoo-y. and any, anytime you hear that sound, you know that there's somebody around that's going to, um, you know, that, that is calling you, they're beckoning you. So um, that is the, and I always say, Hui, that's the shortest chant in the, you know, in, in Hawaiian. So however you're gonna approach people, don't startle them, make sure that you approach them, yeah? Don't be maha oi. Mm. Can, I, can, I, can, I, can I also add, um, there's also protocol to, you know, we see the, um, the commercialized Hawaii, people come off the plane and you get a lay. Mm -hmm. right um but there's actually a protocol to giving lay and so when we take our students out um it's actually um teaching them the oli that would be um you know how they should be conducting themselves when they are giving a lay to someone or presenting it you know if you're like at the Kamehameha statue or at the Lili'u statue or at Mauna Ala the royal mausoleum um and we're at a ceremony, there's um, a specific oli in presenting the lay. And so, and it's really this, um, it's very honorific, right? And very, like when we give the lay, we put it over um, one's head because we believe that in your top of your head is where your kupuna or your ancestors are. And so that's why a lay is given that way. Um, and anyway, and then there's this whole lay protocol, of what kind of lay, it's not just any old lay that you're going to be giving at certain things. And, um, and, and it is, right? It's, it's a little bit, do the Maida. I'm going to make a t-shirt, do the Maida, just try. And then, you know, and then if, if, if you get it wrong, then, you know, you, you go learn. Um, and I think it's the thing about being open to learn. Yeah. Um, and uh, many people are uh, very gracious, you know, to, to guide you if, as long as you're, you know, your thoughts and your na'o and everything is in the right place. Mahalo. What a knowledge that we're acquiring today through our Hawaiian culture and history. Anybody else would like to ask a question before we move on? No? Okay, Rebecca. Okay, oh, okay. I think that was the last question. Okay, here's some things. Now no ke i Oh. oh, this is so you just click. Yeah, so um, for those academics in the house, um, th these are just some citations, you know. And when we look at, you know, this this tension between um, a Western way of looking and a Native way of looking at things, um, you know, when you're in academia, you got to use academia. So anyway. This Yoss article is awesome and amazing. And in our program, this is like one of the first articles they read. Um, and Yoss actually takes um, his data from a school in Hawaii. And really what he's saying when we read it um, after some discussion with the students is that he's talking about aloha. At the core, if our school systems could be rooted in aloha instead of standardized testing, you know, um, and really looking at how to cultivate this. And in Hawaiian, I, I just took some notes. Two things that come up is pilina, which is your connection, that relationship, um, and that relationship with each other, but also um, with the land, right? And of the higher powers that be. And the other one is um, this sense of ohana, right? And the idea of ohana is really that to me, it's not so much the, um, I just read this other article and it's talking about like, schools are not families, you know, your workplace is not your family. Um, but to me, it's everybody understands, people understand their role and people understand their place. And if students and all of us understand wherever organizationally, 
at the schools or whatever um, group that you're a part of, what is your place? And then what is your kuleana and what is your responsibility, right? And then how do we cultivate? Because if, you know, I'm gonna go someplace and it's a Spanish speaking place as well. I'm calling Rosa and Kevin and Maida and Joyce and they're gonna come at me because, or maybe Claudia now, because I, I think I just heard Claudia speak Spanish. You know, these are the people that we can call on because like, heck no, I'm not gonna try, you know? And, um, but but to know this, right? Um, uh, Kumu Samborn said something to my students last semester, which was, you know, when, um, when people ask you, your answer should be yes. And if you're, if it is humanly possible for you to go and help, then, or just do it, you know? And I think this lends to what I said previously of like not being afraid of it, you know? And just um, because that will open up, you know? And um, I loved when Rosa, Rosa talked about portals opening up. The more you learn culturally, mm -hmm. um, it's almost like there are portals that take us back to these places in time. Um, one example is like Mokowea Island right here by our airport, which is one of the last uh, fishing villages um, in Hawaii. And when you learn about the story, when you first look at it, it looks like, oh, there's this beach and it looks a little dirty. And I don't know, there's like these little tiny islands out there and you're like, okay, no big deal. And then um, you learn the story that, oh no, and this little tiny island is where Kamehameha used to have his people who studied the stars and their nav um, oh. the people who would do navigation actually. And then we would take the canoe and they're like, right here is where like, they would look at how the stars were coming down in this little tiny pond. And that's where they trained, you know? And this island over here is where Kalakaua had his summer home. And we're like, what? Like how, it was because of World War II and they came, they dredged that it's much deeper now. Um, but before the why it's called like Ke'ehi, right? Is because you could move, um, what is it? Trod from island to island. And so that's where they get the name Ke'ehi. And it's like, ah, oh, that's the story behind that. So um, yeah, so to, the more you establish Pilina with people and with the place, I think, um, these things will open up, right? Are this developing more of us um, with this sense of aloha. And then the next one, cool. Um, Hi, yeah. tell them, right? So no, successful collegial teaming inspires both instructors and learners with a deeper understanding of culturally responsive pedagogy in Hawaiian. Um, and I'm just speaking for Hawaiian and I'm sure it's the same with many cultures. We have this idea of kaikaina and kaikuaana. And so um, Kaikaina and Kaikuana are um, older sibling and younger sibling of the same gender. And, um, but it is this idea, right? Which lends back to the A'oahu A'omai is that as a, like Kumu Sanborn, I, I see her as a mentor to me, you know? And then she, you hear her saying Kalka, right? She comes back and says Kalka. And so it's like, she gives me the respect um, as doctor, you know, and also as Kumu, um, but when I first started teaching Hawaiian, Kumu Sanborn had me drive up to her classroom at Waipau High School. I opened up my car and she took one copy of every book. This is pre-computers. So every book, every worksheet, every poster, every everything and loaded up my car. And um, it was filled to the brim with resources. And, um, and that's what we do, right, for each other. So, um, you want to add, Kumu Samar? I mean, you know, talk about kaikaina kaiko and just the role reversals. Um, just, you know, when um, Alohi said, I said, say yes. I'm not a person that usually will. Um, I, I don't like to go out of my comfort area, but then the things that have occurred, you know, when I have said yes, especially to Kumu Alohi Lani. I mean, Kalka Alohi yikes she has i have ideas she has ideas you know she goes global with her ideas and so you know if you just take a chance on somebody then like you grow you know you become the learner and then somebody takes the role of of kumu and i think that's the one that says the next one the kaikaina kaikuana 
but yeah definitely and it's always flip-flopping in roles and what a beautiful adventure that um that it's going to take you on wow i am so impressed this has been one of the more interesting cafecito culturales i ever have learning from both of you bringing so much culture in to teach us how to value the culture and respect and be humble to learn. We have, um, when we were talking about uh, the Oli and the sense of uh, respect with the Oli and how the students, they just, like you say, Rebecca, you just don't go to people's house and open the door and get in, right? Um, this is a very um, high value uh, piece of the culture for the students to learn. We got students that sometimes they just walk in and do good morning and they don't say anything. But if they know, and, and you know, it reminds me when I was in, in elementary school, public schools in Panama, uh, we don't have Oli, but because it was the religious part of the culture involved in schools, we have to pray before we start classes and we have to pray before we go home. So I, I found a similarity on what you have here in Hawaii, the Oli, but here is the Oli and over there in another uh, culture in Panama, it was praying before you start, praying before you go home. Joyce, you have a question? No, I don't have a question, but if I get Rosa, Rosa is from the city part, I am from the country and I still remember that in order to, when you were approaching a house in Panama, we will use something we call Saloma mm. to let the person know that somebody else was coming. So I was thinking about that when Kumu was talking about the- Oh, Saloma, okay. Uh -huh. See? But, um, See? Rosa, can I just talk about, you know, so like, it, I don't get the question anymore, but I, I used to get it often because um, I started only in a you know, long time, but um, one of the kids had said, oh, um, are we praying? I said, no, we're not praying. And because I, I went to Catholic school, okay? Kindergarten to eighth grade. So I know what it's like to pray every day in the, the classroom. And then um, I, I thought about it and I said, no, it, 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 it's not. And so, and there was really no, um, and so the, the type of Oli that I do use is not affiliated spiritually. It just really is symbolic, you know? So I, I do respect that. Um, people do come here with different spiritual beliefs and values and things. And so I, I am very careful about the kind of Oli that I pick too. So I am mindful of that, but it is, it's just, it's not just, it is a foundation of respect. Exactly. Exactly. Do we have another um, slide? I think it's the last slide. All right. Okay. So this is the first time that I'm just like, why I'm out of and like, oops, what I'm going to say. This is, you guys have bring so much knowledge, so much information, so much things that we here maybe don't know. Some parts that I didn't know. I don't know um, Kevin or um, Myra that was here before and Joyce. There is a lot to explore. There is a lot to learn, but don't worry about it. Kevin is coming next with some uh, information as well. And the wonderful, I, I don't even hear you yet, but he got something in there about the Ali. Let's keep it secret until the next interview that we're gonna have with him. So, um, and then besides that, we also wants to bring vocabulary. And so, so the members learn some of the words in Hawaii and Hawaiian language and how to say some other parts. So we're gonna divide, um, the interviews because the culture is there, the information of the culture is so extensive, we cannot just cover it in one uh, interview, right? But I really, really want um, to tell you that I appreciate so much that you accept this interview. And like you say, you don't like to come out of your comfort zone. And you here, thank you so much, Kumu. And you have something else to add, please? Yeah, I just wanted to, can, I don't know if Kevin um, put it in the chat though, but um, I don't know if Kevin, this would be a good place for you to even make a commercial for Vaihuihia because um, it is a place where if you wanna make cultural connections, you don't even, and it is online. Um, if you wanna speak and do your little Vaihuihia um, 
commercial for everybody. There you go. Oh yeah, thank you for that opportunity. Um, yeah, so Vaihui here is just kind of a network of teachers who are um, like-minded in that we want to um, look for ways that we can incorporate Hawaii and Hawaiian things into our um, curriculum, uh, no matter what your content area is. So I teach Spanish um, and natural resources for, but we are a group of science teachers, social studies, elementary, high school. Um, we have people who attend the gatherings who are uh, community members, people from different uh, professional organizations, just everybody's welcome just so that we can figure out how um, we can can incorporate Hawaii and Aloha and, and Mo'olelo and all of these things into our curriculums. Um, okay. It is facilitated by the Malama Learning Center. Um, so you can check them out, just Google them. Is, virtual, is virtual or, or is virtual? Yes, right, right now, since the COVID-19 pandemic, it's been virtual. And I think that's been working because it's been easier to open it up to um, more people. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in the past, it has been face to face. And we go to different schools to see how they're um, implementing place based and INA based. That's um, awesome. Can you can you share the link here? But also, um, let's do a uh, right in our um, in the PLC. Let's share that on the PLC as well, because it's that's very interesting. And yes, go ahead and uh, send me the information uh, and then you know, check and see, I think that you can uh, put it on the PLC directly. So go ahead and feel free to do that. And if you want to share here, so Claudia also, she, Claudia's in New York. So imagine you, you know, bring it over all the way there. That would be awesome in there. Okay, anything else that we have so far? No? Well, thank you so much. We have finished another Cafecito Cultural. And please um, go ahead and copy the link that Kevin just shared. I'm, I'm gonna make a brief pause because I needed to. I don't want to um, miss this link. And then, um, thank you, Kevin, so much. Mahalo, Dr. Okumura and Kumu Sambor for today. Excellent, wonderful Cafecito Cultural. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys. Let's, before we close, I always forgot, let's take